Sometimes I hear these people say, all those rich people are miserable. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. Now, I'm not theologically or philosophically shallow enough to tell you money will make you happy. Money will not make you happy. You get more money, it will, do, it will make you more of what you are right now. If you are miserable and you get money, you will be lots of miserable. If you're a jerk and you get money, big jerk. <laughs> and, and, and it'll mess with your family too, to the extent there's crazy in your family. And we all got crazy in our family, right? You know, if you don't think you got crazy in your family, it's you, okay? <laughs> so everybody's got something, right? And you put a little money on the crazy, woo crazy gets crazy. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Is this real? So money is not going to solve your problems. It's going to make them bigger. It's also going to make your opportunities bigger. If you're a generous person, your generosity will go into overdrive. You'll be outrageously generous. And you get a lot of money, we'll call you a philanthropist. Cool word that means you give a lot of it away and you have a blast doing it. You found the most fun you'll ever have with money is when you find that. So... It, you know, it, 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 was a, it was fun, you guys, but I did stupid stuff. How many of y'all ever done something stupid? How many of you didn't raise your hand have a problem with lying? <laughs> you think this is a rhetorical question? I mean, seriously. <sighs> I had borrowed too much money, and our bank got sold to another bank out of state. I know that never happens around here. And a guy looked down, sitting in another state, and said, there's a 26-year-old kid in Nashville owes us a million two hundred thousand and he's flipping houses, we need to limit this relationship, which is banker talk for ruin his life. And they called our notes. We weren't late, but they were 90-day notes, so they had the option of doing that. They just said, we don't want to play anymore. And I went, what? (laughs) That started a crash that took two and a half years to unfold, and we lost everything we owned. We were sued. We were, we were sued so many times, and they were all right. I mean, I made 250000 one year. The next year, my taxable income was 6000 I spent the whole year selling stuff, trying to pay my bills and trying to honor the, those things that I signed, and I couldn't do it because stupid will catch you and tackle you. And I had signed up for stupid on steroids. I've done, I mean, I got a Ph.D. in D-U-M-B, y'all. I mean, <laughs> whoa. We were sued so much that the little guy with the sheriff's department that brings those little pink lawsuit papers, we're like on a first name basis with the old boy. Sharon's making him cookies, you know, come on in, Harold. I mean, (laughs) it's not his fault, bless his heart, what a job. You know, uh, oh man, And, and, and we had a brand new baby and a toddler and our marriage is hanging on by a thread. Y'all, I was so scared, I didn't know what to do. I remember standing in the shower with it so hot in my face, I could just barely stand there, and I would just stand there and cry. I was so scared. 28 years old, I got babies. My poor wife, she thought she married Sir Galahad. Turns out it was Goober. (laughs) I mean, I had messed it up, y'all. I drove a NASCAR into the wall, engines up in the stands. I mean, it's, it was a blow up. I mean, we didn't get a divorce. I mean, number one cause of divorce in North America today, money fights and money problems. Y'all know you have a good money fight, but if you're hillbilly, you have a good money fight. It's a real fight. I mean, we didn't get a divorce, y'all. We held on to each other, but sometimes it's to get a better grip. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, she's from the hills of East Tennessee. Frying pan throwing there is an Olympic event. You know, it's like, man. And finally we hit bottom and we were bankrupt. I was doing one of these news shows the other day. I do these Fox and Friends and Good Morning America stuff. And one of those news anchors is like, you know, this is a cool story. You start with nothing. You become a millionaire. You lost everything. Now you're a multimillionaire. How did you bounce back? I went, dude, when you fall that far, you really don't bounce. It was more of a splat. I said, I'd like to tell you I bounced back, but I didn't. I sat around, whined, and blamed everybody else. And You ever do something stupid and blame everybody else? Yeah, turns out McDonald's does serve hot coffee, you know. It's like, <laughs> man. We live in, a, live in a culture of victims, don't we? It's unbelievable. And so, victims of our own stupidity, all of us. It's unbelievable. And, 
So, man, I sat around whining. But I tell you this, you know, I met God, as I told you, on the way up. But I got to know him on the way down. And you, was, you I mean, we were ground into powder. There was nothing left. We had an I surrender all moment, and it wasn't a Baptist altar call, baby. I mean, we surrendered. White flag. You're in charge. What do you want us to do? Because I didn't know how to be a husband. I didn't know how to be a dad. I didn't know how to handle money, obviously. I had a degree in finance, but I got to thinking about it. Who was it taught me to borrow money? This was my finance professor in college who was broke. Now, what's wrong with that picture? It's like a shop teacher with missing fingers. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, so we get this thing out, and it turns out my heavenly father, even in spite of my stupidity, is crazy about me. Even in spite of my black heart, he's crazy about me. Even in spite of my darkness and the worst Dave that there is, he knows him. He still loves him. He's crazy about me. And he's got a plan, and it's not to bring me harm, but to bring me hope. And so I dove in here hard. And I'm like, okay, how do you be married? Submit yourselves one to another. Oh, no, i got to dry dishes. <laughs> no. Don't spare the rod. My kid's like, what's that, Dad? Come here, baby, I'll show you. <laughs> 2,500 scriptures on how to handle money and possessions. And I started reading people like Ron Blue and Larry Burkett and Howard Dayton, who were the first guys in the Christian space in the modern era to talk about what the Bible says about money. And I was amazed. And I started living, Sharon and I started living by those principles, and they started working. Now, I won't tell you it was instant. It was not instant. If you're looking for instant, if you want get rich quick, God is not in the microwave business. He's a crockpot guy. It's going to take T-I-M-E, time, time. Man, when you start living your life this way, this is a compass. It shows you which way is north, and you're not lost anymore. I don't always like what it says, but it's usually because I'm wrong. Hello. I don't know if I agree with what? With God? <laughs> yeah, right. I had a, a spiritual moment where I realized God was smarter than me, you know. I'm like, okay, I'm probably going to do it this way because it's working. All these years later, it does work, and... Not only did Sharon and I get back on our feet gradually and slowly and start building wealth again, because, you know, we live in a cause and effect world. What you plant, you will harvest. You will reap what you sow, right? So if you plant stupid, you will get a crop of desperate. I've done it. And, and, and you know, if you plant corn, don't be looking for beans to come up. Don't be shocked by because what you put into your life is what you're going to get out. God is real clear. It's all through Scripture. It's a cause effect. The whole thing, you know, the cause effect, the theorem of cause and effect was, you know, a, a Christian physicist that discovered this through a Christian worldview. And so you start to understand that that's how the universe works. And, and our lives are the same way. And yet we live them randomly. And we go, oh, I wonder how that happened. Well, you know, you planted it six months ago, and it grew up and smacked you in the back of the head. And that's what happens in our lives, isn't it? This is real. So we started teaching a little Sunday school class, had about 30 people in there. And then we looked up, and there was about 500 in there. And we took a little book and printed it, and I, nobody would buy it. And I was selling it out of the trunk of my car in a video store. Bookstores wouldn't carry it. And finally, some bookstores started carrying it. And then publishers wanted to publish it. And then all these, you know, 12 million books later, here we are, you know. We start teaching a little class called Financial Peace University and with a bad suit and an overhead projector. And now, all these years later, four and a half million families have gone through it in 40,000 churches. I mean, God really knows how to take lemons and make lemonade, doesn't he? Yeah. He knows how to take something and turn it around. So if your life's in a mess, I'm here to tell you, I got messed down. I know what mess looks like. And we serve a God who cleans up messes and heals broken hearts and touches wounds and, and turns things around. And if you're too cool for school and you're smart, oh, he'll get to you. <laughs> he'll, he'll help you. He'll help you go course correct. He'll knock the hair off your head, I'll tell you that, but <laughs> you course correct you. The last one is this, God loves a cheerful giver. He loves a cheerful giver. 
And this is all about generosity. Oh, yes, it's about the tithe, the tithe to your local church. You're an evangelical Christian. Yes, tithe to your local church. Absolutely. That's a baseline. That's a starting point. But this is all about cheerfulness. It's about your generosity is not just a, a, a transfer of funds. Generosity is a spirit where you decide to be a generous person. Generous people are more attractive. They smile. They're not grouchy. It's not all about them. They're the ones that open the door. They're the ones when the grocery bag has the bottom drop out and your groceries are rolling all over the parking lot. They're the ones out there helping you pick it up. These are the people that when they go out to eat after church, they leave a tip, you cheap Christians. <laughs> Servers don't even want to work on Sunday because of us. They're ridiculous. Well, us, I'm not one. I leave big tips. Big tips, because it's a form of generosity. Well, they didn't give me good service. Oh, shut up. They're carrying a tray that weighs more than you. <laughs> Figure it out. They parked your car in the rain and in the heat. Shut up. Give them some money. They park your $130,000 car and you give them $3. What are you, a nut? That's Ferris Bueller parking the car there. <laughs> you take care of that, man. I give them a $20 bill. My car's still sitting there when I come out. It's amazing. Besides that, that guy's working his way through college or something right then. If he says better than I deserve, that's his code for I'm getting out of debt. If they say that, you've got to give him a double tip. So I give him 40. My wife's like, well, I'm going to park your car. Like, no, you're not. you're not. You're not working your way out of college. You've already put up with me for 30 years, so it's all right. It's a, generosity is a spirit. It changes everything in your life, and God loves when we are cheerful givers because we're made over in his image. And he's a giver. He gave his only begotten son. He's a giver. We can't call ourselves in his image until we change our posture in our spirit about this. But it's awful tough to give if you're broke, if you're in debt and you hadn't saved any money and you don't have a plan and you're not hanging out with other people who are givers. And so change you get to decide today. It'll change your life. When Scripture intersects your life, the truth of God intersects your life, it moves from your head and travels 18 inches into your heart. It changes your behavior and changes the trajectory of your life. It'll change your family tree. You will change everyone with your last name that follows you if you do these things. It's that powerful. Because there's this great plus sign on the scope of history, and it's the cross. And it's an opportunity that his mercies are new every morning. I get the opportunity to do it again. I get the opportunity to thank you, Jesus, for your grace. In spite of all the bad things that I've done and I am, in spite of all of that, I'm so much better than I was, but I'm still not even close. Thank goodness poor Sharon's not married to the same guy she married. All these years later, he's a lot better husband. He's a lot better daddy. He's a lot better leader than he was when he's 32 years old and opened this company. He, he's a lot better at money than he was. He keeps getting better and learning and growing and learning and growing. Still not there. Still not there. But I'm a lot better than I was. And, and it's been a wild ride, y'all. It's, it's the most fun journey you can. If you don't know this guy named Jesus, oh, my goodness, you're missing out on the roller coaster ride of your life. It's so thrilling. You will throw your hands up and go, hoo, hoo and you will, oh, man. It just, it's, a, it's, a, it's unbelievable. The, the sorrows are deeper and the joys are higher. It changes everything. It changes everything. And when you move this money piece around, it gives you the tools to be that in the marketplace and to be that for your family and to get this monkey off your back and to get that elephant out of the room because he's got to go. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these folks. Thank you for these pastors, generations of pastoring this church, and what just wonderful men and women are here. Thank you for letting me be a part of this family this weekend. God, we just pray blessings and mercy and grace and healing on the families that are sitting here. And, and Father, some people are sitting here that have still got their arms crossed, and, and Father, that's between you and them. Be gentle with them. Don't hit them any harder than you have to to get their attention. Love them, Lord. Love them well. In Jesus' name, amen.